Hi, and welcome to DCO Graphics Studio. I wanted to continue with creating architectural elements here using Grasshopper and showing you guys kind of the approach that I take for doing this. So we're going to continue and now this time we're going to create a foundation. Now the base geometry could be a polyline that we bring in, but for this exercise, I'm actually going to create it parametrically. So I'll go here. Um, bring in a new component and I'll bring in a rectangle. Now with this rectangle, let's give it a size. And also I will have this in units feet. So this is going to be um, feet. So here for the X and Y, let's change that and give it a number. So I'll go to 50. Right, so, and we'll plug in this rectangle into a curve component. This way we can also set a curve if we want to. Now that we have this, what we do when we have a slab on grade foundation is basically a footing which has a width and a depth, and then it's going to have a slab um, that it's gonna have a specific thickness. So we're gonna take this curve, we're going to first offset it, using offset curve and we're going to use this curve as our um, curve input and we want to offset to the inside so we're going to go in a negative direction and we're going to plug in a value let's give it a value of 24 now like in the one that created i created with the wall that tutorial i actually had to change this from 24 because this the units is feet if I plug this, it's actually going to be 24 feet. I actually have to divide this by 12. So if I go 24 divided by 12, so slash 12, it gives me a division with 12 RDS uh, input B. And so we can plug in 24 divided by 12 equals 2. Now we can plug that into the negative value and into the distance. And as you can see, this is going to be our putting with so let's change the name here I'll right click on top of the slider and change this to putting depth or width and then depth is going to be what we extrude down so width and this is going to be our base geometry here now what we want to do is create a surface between these two. So what we need to do is plug in both our original curve and our offset curve into a boundary surface. And this will allow us to take both this one and then holding down shift to add another edge here. Now we can take those and flatten the input so we can get that surface here and extrude that down. But since we're actually going to be creating a Putting depth um, this we actually want to bring it down the same amount of the slab thickness but for now let's take this uh, surface and let's extrude it down so extrude we're gonna extrude this surface in the direction well we know we want it to go down so it's gonna be Z negative so I'll double click here, go to unit Z, and then bring in a negative component. This way, the value that we give it, it's actually going to extrude down. The value that we want to extrude down, you actually might want it to be an in inches also. So this is a number that we can copy here, the floating width. I'll just slide this down here, tap Alt. Now we can change this to depth. Let's change that to 36. And now we basically brought that down 36 inches. And I'll take this original surface and these two curves 
or actually I'll just take that one and disable the preview. So now that we've basically created the footing, which we can kind of change the size of it depending on the input, and we can also create a curve and then input it as this or setting one curve onto this component. Next thing we're going to want to do is create the, the top slab that goes on top here. Now, what we could do is take our original curve, bring in a boundary surface. But since this one has two of them inputted, we're going to just input this one into its own and extrude this down the slab thickness. So let's do this again. We'll copy this and both of these and just sl slide it down here. Tap Alt. And we'll plug in this surface into the base. And instead of it being 36 inch deep, we'll make it five inches deep. So as you can see, we have this here that's five inches at the top and we have a footing depth that is now 36 and this is going to be our slab thickness. So as you can see, we have them overlapping here. So the next thing we're going to do is take this and move it down the thickness of the slab. So let's take this, go to a move component, plug in the slab or this top one, or the, I mean the, the footing. This is moving that up. So it's not that one. We want to move this slab down, so this one, and then move, or move in the Z direction, and down. Since we already have that plugged in here, then we could just plug in this negative value here. And since it's not that slab, it's actually the footing. Ah, oh, I kind of confused it a little bit. All right, so we move this down the five inches, and now we can disable the preview on that original one we have basically the footing and the slab on top now let's bring those together using bound or solid union oh, I keep clicking on the wrong one so let's go to union solid union and plug in both slab and the footing. So you can see it won't bring them together until you flatten the input in a similar way to um, sometimes when you plug in two curves into a boundary surface. Now that we have this plugged in, let's disable the preview. And that is going to create our slab. So we can take everything else and disable the preview. And there's one more thing I want to do, but it, first of all, I want to show you what that would look like. So we'll take this and then bake. And let's move this to the side here. The thing is, if we go here to shaded mode, you'll see that we have basically, basically a crease here. And the way to get rid of that is uh, by here inside of Rhino, typing in merge, all planar faces and it'll clean it up. And lastly, sometimes there's like a bit of a chamfer here, um, but that's more of a graphic representation. In reality, you your footing depth is gonna want to be whatever depth. Um, so with that being said, let's go back to the script and take this and plug it into merge all faces. And I'll disable the preview here. 
as you can see, we can also go here to a polyline on a different layer. Select this. And I could unplug this and set one curve here, but I think I'll just bring in another curve component and just set it here. So set one curve. And I'll plug this into this one. So now we can create a quick slab, outside slab on any polyline and change it on the fly and see if it works or not, right? Um, and this is going to take care of the other portion, right? We I kind of did the walls in the other tutorial. This time I wanted to show the foundation. And um, with those two scripts, you can we, we can already see that it can already pre-create some, some pretty cool things fairly quickly. And lastly, I'll take this one and bring it out to a B-Rep just so and disable the preview here. Let's play around with some of these things here. The depth, depth of the footing. That's all going to depend on the structural portion of it. Slap thickness. It can be as thick as, you know, 20 inches. Let's go here. More to six inches. You can also see that here in the elevation. Putting depth. And the other thing that I'm thinking that would be possible to do to something like this is create the rebar spacing in here and show how the rebar would be all tied together. That's another thing that you could probably program into this. But for now, um, this kind of concludes the tutorial. I wanted to show you this next portion. Um, I hope you enjoy it, find it interesting and, uh, and useful. So thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you next time.